OK, so this is why I use Photo Parata along with Darkroom. So, as we had before, customer selected images, saved them to cart and they're there. Now normally the next stage would have actually been done in advance. For, for certain types of events we set up certain types of templates. So I'm going to show you how I would have set a template up and had that set for today. So I've clicked in the album test. I'm going to create a new template. And I normally create them 8x12 inch at 300 resolution, which means they can go to either the 9x6 or the 8x12 printer with no problem. And because I'm going to put four images in landscape format, we'll go for landscape for the name of the border. I'm going to go with a page color of, let's go for a nice green. I'm purpose to come clear for that in a minute and click OK. So we now have a green page. I'm going to add photographs to this and I want them to put four on the page. So the width is going to be six and a height of four and click on there. And that would be pretty boring if they're all square edge like that. So I'm going to soften the edges up by using the predefined mask. So I'm going to click on there, edit, choose the predefined mask and click OK. And we'll do that for there. So they fade out to green. Now I'm going to duplicate that object and just control D again. Whoops, control Z. Oh, this sometimes happens. Just undo the whole thing. OK. Duplicate. Well, that's worked OK this time. And duplicate that. Now, the number one on it actually indicates it's image number one. Now, they're all image number one. What I really want to do is give them each an individual number so they're individual prints. So I'm just going to click on it and where it's got this name up here, photo, I'm going to call that photo 2, photo 3, and then photo 4, and click OK. So I now have a four image border. What I'm going to do, I appear to have a second image up there. I'm just going to delete that. I just want to remove it. Yes. Um, and I'm going to remove that one. There's obviously a problem in there. Yes. It was hidden behind two. So I'm now going to duplicate again. That's two. Stick that over there. Obviously, when I was playing earlier, I had two images selected. Change that to photo one. That will be fine. Save the new border for landscape in test and save that. And that's created my new border. If I go back to my photo workshop, we have an image selected. I'm going to put the borders on, so I need to edit down test for landscape. Whoops, select there we are. And that will put it in position one. I think that suits position three nicely. That one maybe salutes up there. And we'll take the water splash and put it in there. Now the green might not be your taste, and you can put other colours in. This is just to show you how I might do it. So, customer looks at that and says that's fantastic, but you know what? I think I'm, I want the fifth image on it. So. We could have had a five image template provided in advance, but maybe not. So we've got two options. I can go here and edit it in Border Workshop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a photo. And that'll be photo five. And I'm going to make this a vertical one. So that's going to be six and four. And if we go back to the general bit here, 
I'm going to change the shape of it. I'm going to have an oval one in the middle. Click OK. Click OK. And I know what I've done wrong. Go in. I've read the width and the height wrong. So 4 and 6. OK, let's drag that across the middle because that should fit in there quite nicely. And I could now, if I wanted to, I'm just going to show what happens, click Save as New Border. I would need to change the description and the file name, but that would create a whole new border I could use again and again. Or if I thought this was maybe just a one-off alteration, I could do Apply Changes. And it says it will only apply for the selected template, which means just for this image. So I'm going to click OK on that. Then I'm going to drag that image in there and add that. And that looks great. Now the rider then says, oh, what would be really nice is if I could have my name on it. Is that possible? Now we can just add text on the day. And I've selected the color of red. I've got an outline color of black that will make it stand out quite nicely. And I'll click OK. And we can just drag that around. Come on. That's it, for example. It is also possible with templates to create placeholders for text which can be brought up and added as time goes by. But anyway, that certainly made them something they wouldn't get normally and possibly that green background maybe something they wouldn't want normally. But it's up to you to play around and add things in as you feel suits what your customers might want.